What's up guys, welcome back to Gladiators Tennis. This is a review of the Dunlop SX300. This is the more powerful version of the SX300, so check out the specs. Yeah, man. Shoes, wearing shoes. That's strange. After yeah. the last time. All right, All right so this is, uh, we did the SX300 Tour, which is more control oriented. This is more powerful, more spinny. I have very, very bad feeling about this racket because the, the other one was already very powerful and it was like a 98 inch and more control oriented. This is like full on power. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately the design is not the only thing that I don't like about this Dunlop SX300. Wait though, first of all Glads, if you're willing to purchase this racket or anything else tennis related, equipment or whatever, our affiliate link to the Tennis Warehouse page is in the description, together with a discount code exclusive for the Glads family. Now, this was pretty much as expected. This is obviously not my kind of racket because it falls into the power and spin racket category. Dealing with power and spin isn't the problem in these kinds of rackets though, the problem is usually the lack of stability, and unlike the Tour version of this frame which does a pretty good job at stabilizing itself thanks to the smaller head, this one is just a chaos on the contact with the ball. That is where all of the problems come from. Let's start with the forehand, where the racket is powerful and spinny but neither defense or offense felt good because the racket was just lacking so much solidity. On the approach shots it was almost like playing the Russian roulette where all of the bullets are loaded and the only solution is to just not press the trigger. Backhand, same story, but worse. I simply tried to not use my backhand in order to prevent myself from going crazy. No stability once again, no confidence when changing directions or when trying to properly defend. Volleying was decent, again, lacked stability but nowhere near as bad as on the baseline shots. Returning, well, I kind of figured out the formula of how to return with these unstable, spinny, powerful rackets. You just have to do very quick and spinny swings and you should be good to go. What was an absolute mess was the serve. On the flats, the racket was just dancing around the ball, preventing me from even being able to guess the direction of the ball, let alone directing it. On the top spins, the situation was a bit better, but not to a point where I would make it this racket's strength. This is kind of the idea with this racket throughout all of the shots and departments. Like, it is straight up bad at aggressive hitting, flatter shots and serving flat, but where it isn't horrible, it doesn't really exceed at all. And there are several rackets that do everything this thing does decently way better. And then the looks are just not for me. Now, the Tour SX300 was a pretty good racket and I did recommend it to a certain type of glad. This one though, pff, I don't even know who would choose this as their powerful racket of choice. Now, if you've already established that this is the racket for you, this is the one you're getting, you've play tested it and you liked it, absolutely go for it and don't listen to me. Guys, yeah, third person because Puchita is back and she can be our camera woman. And uh, yeah, what were we gonna say? Subscribe, guys. And also, Instagram will post something new. Yeah, because Puchita is here and she, she's in charge of the Instagram, so. Yeah. We don't trust ourselves when we say we're gonna post something new, but this time she's here, so. Ah. Arik, what's up? Are you ready to, 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 to speak? To speak, of course, like the last time. <laughs> but guys, okay. I said I, there were some comments about me calling it a uh, not very you know known brand Don't Love. I'm very sorry, but now it is going to be known because you know this tennis superstar is gonna play with it. So don't worry. <laughs> All right, looks not too good. <laughs> Let's see how it plays. All right, another Don Love, and this one is well acceptable, but it's not a hidden gem if you're looking for control or aggressiveness or forgiveness, or feel, or power. So if you're asking yourself, is this racket any good for anything? Well, I am asking myself the same question. I mean, yeah, it's powerful, for example, but its competitors do much better at providing you that effortless ball speed. On the serve, the stability was an issue for me. Maybe it's a bit short on weight, so even though you can produce a good kick serve, on the flat serves and slices, I felt like I wasn't fully in control of the ball, or my life, but let's not go there. 
and then on the bass line this racket gave me some Kyrgios mentality vibes. Like sometimes it is producing the best shots ever and then suddenly the racket just doesn't want to play. Like it's really hard to control it. So once you lose a bit of feel, it's a game over. And on the backhand slice, the game never starts, it's always over. It's impossible to do it. So just hit spinning backhand and you will be good. Moving on to the volleys, I have to mention that the stability issue, once again, is noticeable. And it's horrible to volley with this thing, because when you volley, you have the racket right in front of your eyes, and the design of this thing is a bit uh, bullshit. So I like the other Dunlop racket that we tried last week, if you haven't seen it, check it out. But would I really recommend this racket to anyone? I think you know the answer. So thanks for watching and check out the greats.